Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the classic Rad. This movie definitely is rad. Um, it definitely lives up to its title. I really enjoyed this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. I can see why it has a cult following. It's definitely unique. It's definitely one of a kind. Um, I'd probably say it's the only BMX biking racing movie. I mean, there's probably other ones, but none of them are as good as this. And this is not an official DVD. This is a custom DVD. I found this cover art online, and I printed it off, and I put it in a case, and I made my own DVD-R of the film, which has the HD rip of the movie that was aired on an HD channel. And it has the trailer, and it has a little interview with uh, Bill Allen that was recorded up on a podcast. So it's pretty much the closest you're going to get to a special edition right now. Um, because for some stupid reason, the rights owners, which I think might be Sony, I think Sony might be the ones who own the rights to Rad. Um, it, was a, it was a TriStar film. I believe it was a Columbia TriStar film. I mean, it was a TriStar film before Columbia uh, uh, co-owned the company. And uh, it was released on, I believe it was released on... Uh, um, Nelson Home Entertainment, uh, I think it was released on that, uh, on VHS from that, uh, company, and I have the VHS, it's just in storage in, uh, in, uh, Oklahoma, not in Oklahoma, I mean, it's in Michigan now, because my dad actually got the stuff out of the storage unit, so it's at, it's at his, his place in Michigan, and I actually saw it when I was, uh, uh, looking through my VHS, uh, when I was over there for a month, uh, a few a few months ago, um, and I, I still remember when I first when I first found that because Rad's a film I didn't I didn't really I didn't even watch it then I, I I watched this for the first time recently and um, and I had the film on VHS for a few years I just never got around to wa watching it I knew about the film too uh, I just never got around to watching it yet. And since I was watching films like Race for Glory and Days of Thunder, I decided, you know, I, I wanted to give Rad a look. And uh, did not disappoint. I had a lot of fun with the movie. Um, but anyway, going back to the, how I found the film, I found the film on VHS at a thrift store at a Salvation Army in uh, Oklahoma City. And uh, I was so psyched because it was one of those things where it was almost like Destiny. Because I I was really into the soundtrack. I heard the soundtrack first. I heard the songs by John Farnham first. Break the Ice and Thunder in Your Heart. And I really liked them. And I was like, man, I really like the soundtrack. I, I really would like to find the movie. I go online to find out it's on DVD. And I'm like, well, I, maybe I really like to find the VHS. And I really want to see this movie. And maybe I did watch it. Um, when I got it in Oklahoma, but I just don't remember watching it and that happened so long ago I mean I could have watched it, but I, I, might, I don't remember watching it though um, but anyway I go to local thrift store I find rad and I couldn't help myself like I find rad and, I'm, and it was really cheap And since it's a hard to find movie getting it for like a dollar was like an insanely good deal So I find it and I'm like I'm visibly excited in the store and I'm going like yes Rad! Awesome! Yeah! Oh! And then there's a guy next to, next to me looking at me like, what? What's wrong with you? I'm like, I found rad! You don't understand! You don't understand how rad this is and how hard it is to find this movie. <clears throat> and uh, the guy looked at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, I don't care, really. Because I found rad. Um, but anyway... This is a film that I think definitely deserves its cult following, and I don't understand why it's not on DVD or Blu-ray. What the hell is the holdup? I remember reading that Scream Factory was trying to get the rights, or Shout Factory, not Scream Factory, because it's, it's not a horror film, but Shout Factory was trying to get the rights to the film, and the rights owners denied them. They said no. And I'm like, why? Because you're going to make the DVD and Blu-ray? Hmm. Uh, yeah, Sony, whoever the hell owns the rights to Rad. Yeah, you had, what, 20 or almost, uh, pretty much, uh, 
I mean, the film's 30th anniversary is going to be soon because it's it's 2016 and and the and the film came out in 1986. The film's 30th anniversary will be in Mar on March 21st. And I highly doubt Sony, whoever owns the rights to this movie, is going to actually release a 30th anniversary DVD or Blu-ray. I mean, it'd be nice. I mean, but no, it's not going to happen, even though they would print money if they did it. Maybe they don't understand how big the fan base is. This is a, this is a film that has, like, a huge fan base. There was a... Oh, that's another thing I put on the DVD. Is this little short little panel that they had at a reunion. Where they showed the film and they had some of the cast and crew talk about it. Um, this is a film that's got a big fan base. It's a, it definitely has a cult following. A lot like the Monster Squad did. And when the Monster Squad was released on DVD. Finally, it was number one in sales for a long time. So I think Rad could do have a similar effect because it has a really big fan base. And there are a lot of people clamoring for this film to be released officially on DVD and Blu-ray. I mean, the HD rip is nice, but you have this the channel logo in the bottom of the screen. And it, it's, it's really big, too. And sometimes there's shit that pops up that, on the bottom of the screen. So it's, it's not a totally immersive experience because you can tell you're watching it from a cable rip. And... I love, it's nice to see the film in better than VHS quality, but at the same time, I mean, this film deserves a proper transfer, deserves a remaster, deserves to be remastered in HD with surround sound and, and, and really good picture quality, and it also deserves to have interviews with Bill Allen and the rest of the cast if they can get them. I know you can't have Hal Needham do a commentary because sadly he's passed away, so we can't hear his thoughts on the film. Um, but we can have other people uh, have their thoughts on it and get that documentary that I heard was hearing about that was, I guess, was made but has never been released, released on the Blu-ray or fund it and get it finished and release it on the Blu-ray. What the hell is the hold up here? Why is this film not on DVD and Blu-ray? This isn't like The Keep where Michael Mann is being an ass and is like, I don't want that film ever to be released on DVD and Blu-ray because I'm ashamed of it. Uh, Rad is a film that I don't think that many people are ashamed of. It's It's got a big fan base. People know about it, even in the mainstream. I mean, on Tosh.0, a popular Comedy Central show, uh, Daniel Tosh is a big fan of Rad and, and had Bill Allen on the show multiple times. Um, is it the soundtrack? I don't buy that. I don't buy that the soundtrack is the reason why the film's on a DVD and Blu-ray. Because there's plenty of movies that have licensed songs that are end up on DVD and Blu-ray. I mean, for instance, the song Send Me an Angel by Real Life that's in this is also on Teen Wolf 2's soundtrack. Okay? Um, I don't believe it's John Farnham who is making it so they can't release Rad. I don't think he's that much of an asshole. Uh, although, the, the for some reason in Turbo Kid, which is, which is definitely inspired by this movie couldn't use John Farnham's thunder in your heart but I don't I don't I really don't think that's an instance of uh they couldn't use the song I think they just did a cover because they didn't want to pay the the rights they didn't want to pay for the royalties um but regardless Sony whoever owns the fucking rights to the movie stop being a dick stop being a lazy asshole and fucking pay for the rights to the music then I mean what are you waiting for? This is not a movie that deserves to be stuck on a bootleg for the rest of eternity. I'm sorry. This movie's too good and too much fun for it to be relegated to to that fate. I mean, it's frustrating. It's it's like it, you have a a total win-win scenario. You have a total bestseller DVD and Blu-ray on your hands. And you're sitting on your hands and doing jack shit with it. I mean, and you're telling Shout Factory they can't do it, but then you sit there and don't with your thumb up your ass and you don't do anything. Just send the Sony execs or the people who own the rights to Rad and send them down to send them butt sliding, but send them ass sliding. But instead of ass sliding down, you know, a, a nice little water slide, send them down a slide with fucking nails. 
in the middle. So they slide down fucking nails to tear right through their fucking assholes. They go flying down the slide screaming and bleeding. For their fucking incompetence and their fucking bullshit by not releasing this movie on DVD and Blu-ray. Flash it is on DVD and Blu-ray and it has special features. And that movie can't even come close to being as rad as rad is. It's just, I, I don't get it. I had to get that off my chest first before I actually talked about the actual movie. Because, you know, every time I hold this up, I'll be reminded this isn't an official DVD or Blu-ray. And that just frustrates me. It's what, This film, to me, is probably number one right now. I mean, Split sec Second is higher than this, actually. So Split Second and Death Machine are like number one and two. And they're like Rat, and actually The Keep. I really like The Keep, so... Yeah, you have Split Second, The Keep, Death, Rad, Death Machine are like my top four movies that need to be released on DVD and Blu-ray. Like, and, I mean, Death Machine is on DVD, but it's in full screen. I'm talking about the uncut version. Oh, but it is released, but it's in Germany somewhere. But really, if you're talking about films that are not released on DVD at all, it, it would be the top two would be The Keep and Rad. Which I still don't understand why either one isn't released. And I think Spring Factory's tried to get the keep too. But of course Michael Mann. It's got to be a fucking dick. But anyway. Um, Rad is a film released in 1986. It didn't do very well. It was it made for $11 million. And only made about $2 million. So it was a box office bomb when it, upon its release. But it's gained a very big cult following over the years. It's directed by Hal Needham. It's written by Jeffrey Edwards and Sam Bernard. And it stars Bill Allen as Crew Jones, Lori Laughlin as Christian. Oh man, Lori Laughlin is like at the peak of her hotness in this. I, I'd go ass sliding with her anytime, any day, anytime, anywhere. Uh, Talia Shire's in this as Mrs. Jones, Crew's mom. Talia, she doesn't have much to do here. She really doesn't. I mean, Talia Shire, like, I think they cast, they casted her in this. Because they're like, yeah, they totally cast her a rad because they were trying to get kind of a uh, rocky sort of feel. Because rad is kind of like rocky, but for a BMX biking. So they were kind of trying to, so they tried to get her in it. Um, but she's all right, but she doesn't have anything to do. I mean, there's there's scenes during the hell track race near the end. Where she's just sitting there in the audience looking bored out of her mind. <laughs> so, I, I really think it was just Talia Shire was it's cast because of her relation to Rocky. And also because she's a decently big star. If you think about it, like, she's the biggest star they have other than Lori Laughlin. But even at that time, she wasn't really that big of a star. So, Talia Shire was like the big draw. Um, you also have Ray Walston who plays Burton Timmer. You have Alfie Wise who plays Elliot Dole. Jack Weston plays Duke Best. Bart Connor plays Bart Taylor. Uh, Marta Kober plays Becky. Jamie Clark plays Luke. Laura Jacoby plays Wesley Jones. And there's a few other actors and actresses. I really didn't really go on to do that much. Yeah, the film was was really didn't really do very well. It receives a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is fucking bullshit. A zero, a zero. This movie. Gets a zero on Rotten Tomatoes. You want to know why I think Rotten Tomatoes is bullshit? Yeah. Rad getting a fucking zero. That's why I think it's bullshit. It's received a lot of negative reviews when it came out. I mean, some guy from the New York Times said, Teenage, years may, teenage ears may not split from the music or ache from the dialogue, but anyone, anybody over 20, beware. You're willing to sacrifice a solid future for a bicycle race, says a hero's mother. It's very self-destructive. If only he listened to his mom, but who can blame him for preferring his bicycle? What kind of fucking review is that? And seriously, I'm 26, and I really like this movie, so your analogy is full of shit. And I know a lot of other people who are my age and older that still like this movie. So I think, I, I really, no, you're completely wrong. That's a blanket statement that's fucking incorrect. On the website Rotten Tomatoes, Rad is given a 0%. Uh, the audience rating, though, stands at 91%. It 
And Guardian writer Nick Evers had found it had the high, largest discrepancy between audience and critical, critical reception in the Rotten Tomatoes database from a pool over 10,000 movies analyzed. Exactly. Where the hell are the good reviews? Why, why is, I've seen, I've seen plenty of reviews from people from, on Rotten Tomatoes from websites that don't even exist anymore, bashing movies like Cobra and lowering their score, but rad? There's nothing. There's like some, some reviews from back in the day and nothing really new. I mean, you're telling me there's nobody on the internet who did like a blog review of rad? I mean, come on. Rad is a pretty, a pretty popular movie for a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I don't buy that there's no positive reviews of this movie available on the internet. So, <laughs> I don't buy it. That's such bullshit. Uh, it features an excellent soundtrack. One of my favorites from the 80s. I love this soundtrack. John Farnham's songs are two of my favorite songs from the 80s. Uh, Break the Ice and Thunder in Your Heart. I mean, Thunder in Your Heart is so awesome. You know, Cause there's thunder in your heart. Every move is like lightning. Da -da 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 Taste of the glory. You know, it's just an awesome song. Like I can't really do it justice. Listen to the song. Yo, yo, I'll put links down below in the video description for uh, "Thunder in Your Heart," "Thunder in Your Heart," and uh, "Break the Ice." There's other songs I like too, like "Wind Me Up" by Three Speed. I think that's the band who did it. And um, of course, nice use of real life semi and angel in the dance, the dance biking sequence, which was really fun to watch and really surreal. And only in the 80s are you going to see a duet, a dancing duet, a bike, dancing with bikes, dancing with BMX bikes, only in the 80s. Um, but that's part of what makes the movie awesome is this 80s awesomeness about it. Um, I mean, the film's story focuses on Crew Jones, played by Bill Allen. He's a young BMX biker who lives in a small town with his mother, Talia Shire, and his sister. And uh, Bill Allen was, uh, his character in this is 17, but he was actually 19 when he played this role. Um, and interestingly enough, his hair was dyed not to really fit the character, but so he can have the same hair color as his stunt double, Eddie Fiola. So he ended up actually dyeing his hair, so it matched the hair of the stunt double. And another kind of fun thing about this film, the original title wasn't rad. I know, I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine, right? Well, how can it not be rad? I mean, rad racing. Um, but no, the original title was Balls Out. <laughs> what? Balls Out? I mean, that's, that's a terrible title. That's a horrible title. I mean, that sounds like a gay porn. Balls out? I mean, what the hell? Really? Balls out. That was the original title for Rad. Thankfully, they changed the title because that title sucks. Uh, <laughs> it's a really awful, 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 terrible, no good title. So, um... And it's based on a, a line when Sergeant Smith talks to crew before the race and he says, tells them to go balls out. So I guess they thought that was, that was such an awesome line that let's make the movie called Balls Out. <laughs> let's call the movie Balls Out. That that really does. That's, I can't even believe that, really. Balls Out. That's just bad. Um, so crew is faced with a tough decision. The qualifying races for the hell track are the, are the same day as the SATs, which you must take in order to attend college. Which is not necessary. I mean, he can take the test later. So it's 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 like it's it's kind of like it's a it's a dilemma. But it's like it's a dilemma that's like it's not really a dilemma. I mean, you could take the SATs later. You don't have to take them immediately after you graduate from high school in order for you to be able to uh, get into college. Hell, you don't even have to take your SATs. You can just go to community college, get your AA transfer degree, and then you can go do whatever the hell you want. That's what I'm doing. And I never even took any SATs. I never took a single SAT test. So you don't even have to take SATs. So this dilemma is just kind of like, who gives a shit? Go race. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, 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 the, this film doesn't have the greatest plot in the world or the best acting. But that's not what makes it great. That's not what makes it so much fun. What makes it entertaining, what makes it so much fun is its premise. And it's 
and its characters and the soundtrack and it's just a fun movie to watch. It's very entertaining. I love how it doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, there's some instances where it's trying to be serious with its plot. Oh, I need to take my SATs. My mom doesn't want me to race, but I'm going to race anyway. Screw my mom. And, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, whatever. But, however, winning Hell Track means $100,000, $100, which in 1986 dollars, that's a lot of money, a new Chevrolet Corvette, and fame. I did, if I if I was a talented biker, I'd be like screw SATs, fuck the SATs. I mean, fuck, I, I'm gonna be in debt in college, and any anyway. So why don't I win the money so then I can pay for college and I don't have to do any uh you know I don't have to have student loans. It's a win win. I have I'm gonna have a new car and I'm a hell track champion. Come on, don't you get it, mom? A uh, crew that chooses, of course, chooses the money and fame. How, why not? It's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. If anything, it will help you in college. The Hell Track race is endorsed by the city in a duplicitous Duke Best, played by Jack Weston. Who this guy's not a great actor, but he plays a good asshole, so it works out. President of the Federation of American Bicyclists and the owner of Mongoose Bicycles. Best keeps adjusting the rules in order to keep crew out of the race and ensure BMX star Bart Taylor, who is actually a, a Olympic gymnastics champion, uh, Bart Connor, has an easy road to victory, thus providing a financial windfall for Mongoose Racing, Bart's sponsor. Racers from all around come to the small town for the Hell Track, which is an awesome name anyway. I mean, just the name of the race is rad. I mean, Hell Track? That's so cool. And... The Hell Track originally, the set was, the ramp was too high. I mean, and it was so high that filming was delayed because none of the riders wanted to go down it. The ramp was cut to a 25-foot tall version. And BMX Plus Magazine, I guess they did an article on this around the time uh, when the film was going to be released. And there's like a few other, and even the character of Crew is actually loosely based off of Eddie Fiola, his stunt double. So there's like all this other kind of stuff where, you know, he, you know, Bill Allen's character is, is really inspired by a stunt man. I mean, how often does that happen? That's a very unique uh, moment, really. That's a unique moment in, in film production history. So, racers, they meet up for the Hell Track. Crew meets Christian Hollings, Lori Laughlin, who becomes Crew's romantic in interest. They meet at the local high school dance, where instead of dancing like the other couples, they perform freestyle bike stunts on the dance floor to the odd many to send me an angel. Do, 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 right now. Yeah, so they, they uh, it's, it's such a surreal sequence. Like, you watch this scene and you're like, what? What the hell? And then I'm like, I love it though. Like I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is this? But at the same time, I'm like, I love this. I really do. I love this because it's it's different. It's definitely different. And the suits that they wore during that dancing sequence, they were borrowed from the movie V. So uh, and that was a uh, Rod and Rex. Rod and Rex, their dance suits were borrowed from the movie V. So the Lori Laughlin and uh, crew, you know, Christian and crew. Their their uh their suits are definitely not the the um, not from V. But I thought that was interesting too. Like the guy, you know, Rod and Rex when they're dancing the bikes, it's it's, it's V. <laughs> I was like, those look familiar. I was like, yeah, those do look familiar. They stole them from those aliens of V. Oh, uh, but anyway, so they have this freestyle bike stunt dance. And after being blocked from the race due to last-minute change on a participant sponsorship, Crew is ready to give up his dreams of winning Hell Track until his younger sister Wesley gives him a shirt to wear at Hell Track, reading "Crew is rad." So Crew and his friends have come up with an idea to sh to still enter the race, and using the ten thousand dollars Crew run from qualifying, which is a fun sequence for the show. I'm qualifying, I, and I know some people say he cheated. But really, not really, because I think that there's two different sort of, there's different paths you can take during the qualifying race. And either way, I don't care. I don't. I don't give a shit. Because this, it's because it's rad. Um, so he he get he gets the money for qualifying, and then he uses it to start up his own sponsor, you know, his own teach little own business, a uh, rad racing, small t-shirt business. 
And they're selling a bunch of t-shirts. But however, days before the race, best, best changes the rules again. God, that man is such a stinker. And then claiming any company sponsoring a racer must be worth $50,000. When the townspeople hear about this, they rally around crew and his friends with their contri contributions along with the, excuse me, along with the generation donation, generous donation from a wealthy local, Mr. Timmer, played by Wade Walston, who even gives uh, uh, Bess the finger. He's like, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is definitely a fun moment. It, it tells him to fuck off. And Rad Racing comes up, with, comes up with enough money, and Jones is finally able to enter Hell Track. During Hell Track, Duke Best gets the Reynolds twins to try try to take out Crew, but to no avail. And in the final lap, Bart, who leads the race, slows down, that's, so he and Crew can face each other one on one during the final stretch. And I really like that moment because in a lot of movies like this, you don't see that. You don't see that show of sportsmanship from Bart where he respects Crew as a competitor, and he wants to see if he can beat him one-on-one. -on -one. If he's going to beat him, he wants to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. And if he's going to get beat, he wants to get beat fairly, fair and square. And I like that. And, of course, Crew does win Helltrack. Bart Taylor's kicked off the Mongoose team, but in the final scene, Crew offers Taylor a spot in Rad Racing, which is another thing you don't see very often in films like this. You don't see the villain end up reconciling with the, the hero. And really, he's not really a villain. Bart Connor is just a a pawn in... Uh, he's just being used by uh, Best. So, really, he's not really a villain. He's just a talented biker who's being manipulated by, the, by his promoter. And so it's nice to see that he basically tells his promoter to fuck off. This isn't right. And even when he's said, telling his, you know, those twins, take him out. Even Bart's like, hey, that's not right, man. That's not cool. You know? And it, it was nice to see that. A villain who's not one-dimensional in a movie like this. Mm -mm, interesting. Fascinating. Um, and, of course, you know, Crew also gets the girl, Christian, Lori Laughlin. Oh, God, she's so hot in this. And uh, he gets to go ass sliding with her anytime he wants, and yeah, ass sliding. That they, he does say that. I mean, there there are lines of dialogue that's he even he when he first asks her out, he's like, "Hey, would you like to go ass sliding with me?" <laughs> <It's cute. coughs> ass sliding. This movie introduces the vernacular of ass sliding, and it's it is it's 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 it, it, it's exactly what you think it is. You slide in your ass down a down a little water slide. <laughs> uh, but um, it, it has nothing to do with the sexual act. It just it's just sliding down a water slide, innocent, and, and a little bit of innocent fun. Um, that's kind of you know it's kind of the film. It's innocent fun. It's entertaining. It's a fun movie. Um. Are there some problems? Some of the performances aren't that great uh, by the actors. Um, but the film is fast-paced. It, it's never boring. It's uh, Some of the humor doesn't work. I mean, the, the, the villains are pretty uh, annoying, and I guess that's the point. But especially uh, Best Sidekick. God, that guy's a fucking ass. <laughs> He's really, really obnoxious. Uh... Uh, is it Elliot Alfie Wise? Is that is that the actor? I completely forgot the guy's name, but he was a total jag off. That's the point. But he was just obnoxious, and I, I kind of got the whole kind of vibe that these villains were kind of like the bad wrestling promoters. <laughs> is that kind of feel? You know, like getting involved and changing the rules. And I can imagine you know people you know just get, imagine people if this is a wrestling match, they could be the promoters and like cheating. You know, and shit like that. And the fans are booing them and getting mad on them. But yeah, the movies, it goes, it's not that long. It's only 93 minutes. It goes by really quick. It's got fun, fun moments, uh, some really great stunts. What really makes this movie work and what makes it, in my opinion, what really makes, what really has made it stand out for so many years and has really earned it a very pretty large fan base is because it is so entertaining and because, hey, you got some really well shot and well edited BMX biking sequences. Some fun bits of stunt work with uh, Crew Jones. The scene where he's uh, 
running away from the from the cops in in, in a, I think it's like in a lumber yard. It's a it's a really well done a bit of stunt work. Uh, the Hell Track race itself is fun and exciting to watch with some really great stunts, including like a backflip in midair. Um, the qualifying race is fun to watch too. It's got a great soundtrack. I mean, the soundtrack is another thing that makes this film really stand out and really makes it work. And uh, the cinematography by Richard Le Lederman and the editing by Carl Crest is, is solid. The directing by Hal Needham is good. I mean, Hal Needham, I've always thought, is a good director. And uh, may he rest in peace. And I thought he did a good job directing this movie. I mean, he did a good job directing the biking, the BMX biking sequences and all the other sequences as well. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy Rad. I, I had a blast at the film. I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was very entertaining. I thought it was, it was rad. Rad was rad. And I mean, it's really too bad that this is not on DVD and Blu-ray officially. I know I've kind of beat that, you know, that notion into the ground already, but it deserves to be mentioned as many times as possible because this is, it's just utter bullshit that this is not available officially on DVD and Blu-ray. I mean, multiple fans have put together petitions and they put together all this kind of stuff to ask for a Blu-ray or a DVD and the rights owners have basically told us to fuck off and said, fuck you. We don't give a shit about Rad. But if other people want to try to release it, then we give a shit. See why I'm pissed? See why I'm upset? See why we're upset? That's bullshit. Even if it even if you don't like the movie, you have to admit that's bullshit. But anyway, um I don't know what else to say about Rad. I mean, pretty much said all there is to say about it. And um if you haven't checked out the film yet and you like 80s sports movies, I recommend it. I really do. If you like Karate Kid and and uh, other sort of 80s sports movies, I mean, it's definitely of its time. But it's an awesome time. I mean, with uh, with great songs and fun characters and and yeah, it's just a wholesome, fun, entertaining, uh, fun movie. I mean, yeah, I, I really like it. I think it's probably the best of the. I don't know, the extreme sports 80s movies I can think of. It's definitely better than Thrashing. And it's definitely better than some of the stuff in the 90s, like Airborne. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Rad. And I don't know what else to say, because it was rated out of five stars. Um, since I only have a few, few problems, like a little bit with the humor, Atari Shire's character is kind of useless. The, the her performance is... She just really doesn't give. It seems like she doesn't give a shit half the time. Uh, it's just taking a paycheck. The script, the plot. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, but it's not really that much of a problem. Except the drama aspect is kind of lame. You need to take your SATs, but mom, I don't want to. I'm a really good biker, and I can win a hundred thousand dollars in a new car. And and uh, but you need to take your SATs. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, but other than that, you know, I, I, I like the film. I don't, I don't think there's very many problems with it. That's why if I first rate out of five stars, I give it four and a half out of five. Another one of my favorite sports movies, definitely, It'd definitely be my top ten. Really like this movie. But anyway, thank you for watching my review of Rad, and I will see you guys later. See ya.